Okay, welcome back. Day three. Day three for me. Um, the Rex has done like 95% of the work. I'm going to do the hood, which is like my favorite thing. Uh, so the rest of the car has been corrected. Uh, you saw the compounding in the previous episode. Uh, now I'm going to do some finishing, show you a couple of things that you know, I've shown you before, but I guess I'll show you again. Um, but the, uh, you know, the heavy lifting's been done. Now all we have to do is jewel it up. So I got to do the hood, this. Uh, I'll also be doing a video on the door jams. I'll probably include that in this video because there's only so much, so much of the uh, finishing to show you. Finishing is so much easier than compounding. So, you know, when we're finishing, we shouldn't be doing any, any correcting really. We're just cleaning up what's left over from the, from the, uh, the compounding stage. And so in the, the case of this truck, the most important part of the compounding stage was the removal of the coating, which again, we don't know for certain that it's off. We can only hope. So, so we're going to get whatever's here and that's what we're going to be working with. So we should be okay though. It appears that it's come off. So I'm just prepping with the eraser here, get all the, all the um, dust, although there isn't a whole heck of a lot of dust in here. That's part of the reason why I just ordered Cut Max to have. So Jeskar doesn't dust much, Cut Max doesn't dust much, and Perfect Finish doesn't dust much. As long as you keep Perfect Finish, as long as you keep the bottle shaken, keep it uh, mixed, then you're, then you're fine with Perfect Finish and dusting. And of course we've been controlling the dust by blowing it outside instead of blowing it all over the, the garage here. Oh yeah, 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 this is good. See, this is why it's good for me to video. I always get good stuff. Check this out. Impromptu unboxings and building air compressors and all that stuff for this. Check it out. This is a Revo handheld which is like from what i understand i found this company at sema yeah, they make paint booths and ir curing lamps these crazy contraptions this is like the world's most expensive at least as far as i know handheld ir lamp but yeah this uh this is what i need for the next detailing project which will be the m3 which i'm getting antsy to do Raptor was more of a impromptu. I was putting the wheels on. I'm like, I gotta get this thing dialed in. So I think this was like 1,100 bucks or something like that. So, yikes. But I've seen this before. It's freaking awesome. Lightweight. Yeah, and so we'll just use this to heat up the paint. I could use this to cure the coating on here, but I mean, that would be kind of difficult to sit there and hold the darn thing. Um, but I mainly bought this so that I can uniformly heat. Oh, man, maybe I better save the box for a little while. But I want to uniformly heat this, um, the M3's paint, rather than just, because you can just pull it out in the sun, then I can't control the temperature. So with this, I can use my fluke thermometer and it can control the temperature that uh, I'm getting and hopefully ensure that I get the water spots out that, uh, that I have. So you'll have to check out that series. I already made a video kind of playing with a heat gun and I knew after messing with a heat gun on the trunk for an hour and a half that uh, I need to get something like this. So, cool. I never even got a shipping indicator. I thought, um, Thought maybe it wasn't uh, wasn't coming. Maybe they weren't working. Okay, let's get set up to finish polish. Okay, so I stole this method from my, uh, my friend Andy Ward, who I don't know why this works. Something about the combination of this 12 millimeter orbit and this little machine. This is the Duetto. Don't ever buy the Auto Geek longer power cord versions because the power cord is terrible. I need to just send this in the Rupes and get a new power cord or, or order a new power cord to put on this thing because this is the worst power cord on the planet. It'll stay coiled up forever. So we're going to take a large pad and large backing plate 
So we've kind of messed up the balance of the machine, but we're gonna take this bigger backing plate, put it on a Duetto, and something about this with perfect finish for finish polishing is pretty darn magical. So we'll end up using that. Rex is using the uh, pneumatic back there, so we'll just use the uh, we use the little uh, three-inch electric. And um, I don't think I usually I very rarely I gotta go get some three-inch pads. I very rarely break out the nano for this kind of stuff, you know, finishing. So maybe we'll get a couple three-inch pads. Okay, got a pad here. Probably should bring this up so I'm not chopping my head off. Um, I got a meeting with uh, coaches and all the guys working at home just to strategize. Kind of gave them a week to get their bearings. Now it's time to go, get stuff done. So that's a 12.45, it's, oh, it's 12.08, so I got time. I better set my alarm, otherwise I'm gonna forget. Okay, so let's get some perfect finish. So priming, priming a foam pad, you can just prime on the fly, meaning just put a couple of dots. I'll show you in a second. Set it in place and go. Okay, so I'm gonna take a couple of dots. I find that shaking up perfect finish is really necessary. Otherwise it'll get, it'll start to dry out. That's a big pad, so put a decent amount of product on. I'm gonna take this, put it on the front of the hood here, and prime it. On speed two. Two. Pretty even coverage. Should be good to go. I'll just put the dots in the other spot. So with a diminishing polish like this, if you want to, I know we're splitting hairs, but if you want to uh, ensure that you get a similar finish or the same finish across the whole surface, you know, I just broke it down a little bit there, even just on those couple little minor passes. And so, you know, I want to spread, so I'm going to pick an area. So I'm going to pick this area right here. So I want to spread the polish around first so i get the you know the the, the you know, i guess it would be the most cutting and then as i make successive passes it cuts you know this polish breaks down cuts less and less and finishes out and so the only real thing with finishing and again this for you to see the difference especially on white paint like this would probably be impossible but if we're going to do it we might as well do it right and just you know use some simple logic here that you know, this is a diminishing polish. It starts at what they call a four and ends in a six or something like that. What do they say? Yeah. It starts as a four cut and ends as a six cut. So it breaks down. Six meaning less cut or six gloss. So again, I'm going to spread the area that I'm going to work. Like that. I'm going to bring my speed up to five. Four and a half. And now I'm going to work the polish. That's one pass. For good measure, we'll do four. And I'm tripping over this terrible power cord as it wraps around my ankles. Oh, I love removing perfect finish, it's so good.
And then what ends up happening is as you kind of work your way through the car, I get lazier and lazier and do bigger and bigger sections. Oh yeah, looks real pretty. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So it takes out the little bit of micro marring, a little bit of the tick marks from the, um, the heavier compound. I mean, that's the whole point of doing this is to jewel it up. You could never see those, that little micro marring without a light and the right angle. But, you know, I, wanna, I want it to look as pretty as possible if we can help it. I also don't find the need to blow out pads as often. All right, so let's work this other. I might blow out the pad like once every three or four passes. It's just not as necessary. We're not removing as much uh, paint. Turn it around. Forgot to change the speed, but we'll be all right. Now let's just work this whole area. See, I told you, I'm already getting lazy. You don't need a ton of pressure. Just enough to keep it nice and flat. I'm holding it at a weird angle here, so. One. wiped out I almost well I did wipe out you know it slid out uh, yeah reaching too far let's get a three inch pad set up here Listen to that rotary screw compressor. Oh man, I'm so excited. Can't wait to get all my piping in. It's been so long since I've used the electric in.
hard to keep it rotating. Let's finish polishing people. Nice and easy. Don't have to worry about, and I still want to manage the edge of the pad, but I don't have to worry as much about edge work because we've hopefully, hopefully already corrected all of that in our compounding stage. Oh man, I love wiping off perfect finish. Yeah, nice. Of course, we'll prepare the panel for the coating, but we're about ready to go. That's because Rex has been polishing for like 10 hours and I've been polishing for about 20 minutes. Hashtag fake detailers of Instagram. I'm the leader of that group. I'll blow out the pad after I finish the whole hood. What a difference, man. You know, the, the older coating started to yellow a little bit as it held on to some dirt. And so now it looks bright, crystal white. Okay, finished up the uh, finish polishing. Uh, what I wanna do next, I wanna clean this up here. I tested it on the other side. It works kind of okay. Uh, there's a lot of like gunk and water spotting. There's some streaking on this as well. Uh, and so what I found is that using, uh, using a combination of Meguiar's number 39 and a, my, what's become my all purpose scrub brush has been a nice combination for this application here of getting this thing cleaned up. So first thing we do is just spray this. Make a huge mess. And my towel. See all the dirt lifting. This is like semi porous plastic. So that'll help get it all the yucky stuff off anyway. That's a technical term, yucky stuff. So look at all that funk. I'm just getting that nice and cleaned up. And I found there's still a little bit of streak left over, but throwing some eraser on here, I'm able to clean it up nicely. So the only thing left to do here before coating, of course I gotta do the interior, that'll be a separate project, but the only thing I got left to do is, uh, I gotta do this, this set of door jams here and I'm good. Guy's coming to get the method wheels tomorrow. Yeah, it does look a lot better, man. So that's a good little, little project, a good little move. And then hopefully putting some, some coating on it will richen it up and make it look nice. So what I'm gonna do next, this is how I normally deal with the windows is I just polish it with whatever compound I was using. Using, you could use Siri glass. I just, I don't like working with that stuff. So I like to try to use a, just a regular compound, whatever I used on the, on the paint 
on the glass. <laughs> Again, I'm not correcting the glass. I'm just really kind of deep cleaning it. Listen to that compressor. That makes me so happy. My dad's gonna kill me all this last two years. He's been in there having me make them all deaf when they're working with the uh, with the with the piston compressor, now we got the rotary screw. There's no one over here. I just find that doing this step just makes the glass look super clean and makes it accept our wolves so much better. I've already done the windshield, I've already done the back. This is ready to come off. Not that it was really doing anything anyway. You just have to make sure to really prep them. I'll hit them with some 90. 91% IPA. And clean them up extremely well here. Yeah. Even after I, after I coat the car, because I always do the glass last. But I'm gonna wipe the trim down with IPA as well. That's it, man. So it's pretty time consuming to roll through these big windows, but it's worth it just to get all the little, get little water spots and things like that. I find that just, it's just a nice deep cleaning. I'm gonna pull this pad out. What a difference having these silent compressors. Oh man, makes it so enjoyable. My countertops, my custom countertop and desk just shipped today, so I should have that in a couple of days. See, look how much better that looks. Nice and clean. Still some streakiness to it, but I think that the CSL XO combo will take care of that. Also, use a little more polish than you're used to using when you're doing the windows. <laughs> hit this without adding extra polish so it doesn't fling, fling everywhere. One 
that's a little section, and that's a wrap for polishing outside of the door jams, which I gotta do. Good stuff, man. I'm gonna feel really good having this truck dialed in. It's been a long time coming, three years. A little over three years, but always makes me second guess it because you take something that beat up, you can always kind of fix it. So it makes me not want to take such good care. But then again, again, we did such a huge project getting this thing up to the standard that it is, which then made it much easier this time around to correct. We'll do a good cleaning to the windows inside. And then Michelle and, kid, and the kids will trash this in a week. <laughs> and I won't look. Let me just take a look here. I'm gonna knock this out. Yeah. I just wanna polish this thing right here. That's all it really needs polished. This top part here doesn't need messed with. Yeah, let's see. So, because this isn't a critical area, I won't need to finish this. You won't be able to tell. I just wanna make sure it's not scratched up, and I know we coated it. So I wanna remove the coating so I can get a fresh, fresh application. big difference even if it's just cleaned up the dirt see if this was my truck and I was driving it I would be steam cleaning all this stuff but can Michelle doesn't freaking care so I'm not gonna go that far so I'm gonna finish up the door jams and I'll come in uh, wrap this up with you all right that's a wrap on the polishing uh, so we ended up doing a two-step correction uh, I don't know that we would have needed a two-step if we didn't have to remove the coating uh, so notice, not a whole heck of a lot of difference on coating removal versus um, just compounding, polishing. You just got to look through, make sure that we're correcting. Uh, also worked on the glass as well. And so the exterior of the truck is ready to be wiped down and finished tomorrow. So we'll be doing uh, CSL, two coats of XO, which will take, you know, a day or so. Put CSL on in the morning, uh, coat all the trim. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think this is the first vehicle I've ever, notice I almost said car there. This is the first vehicle I've ever removed the coating and then I never have them long enough to remove the coating and then, then start over. So uh, I'm interested to see how the trim does. I'm excited to get the new trim pieces. It looks like there's a delay. Um, I just got an email from the Ford dealership I bought the stuff from. It was like Ford parts online or something like that. And uh, they said, uh, you know, shipping is delayed. I, I paid for overnight, but you know, like, I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So uh, anyway, in the polishing stage, I used one big, uh, big pad because Rex did most of it. Three and three for finishing. So three, uh, three inch, three six inch or five inch, five inch and uh, one six inch. We used two microfiber, one inch, and we used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, three inch, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, of the five inch uh, microfiber cutting pad. So um, just to give you a reference point, and probably used a, I don't know, a quarter of a bottle of Cutmax. I'll have Cutmax in the store, uh, should be here in a couple of days. Uh, so that should be up here maybe a day or two after this video comes out if you want to buy that from me. Uh, so I think the having Cutmax, Jeskar Heavy Correction Compound, which isn't as heavy or as aggressive as the Cutmax. So Cutmax, Jeskar, Sonex Perfect Finish, and then down below all of that, you'd have um, uh, the the uh, aggressive M101, which you have in the store. So those four polishes, uh, I think, make make a lot of sense for uh, for to cover pretty much all your basis. 
So anyway, this was a fun little polishing project. Uh, oh, the other things we used were these three scan grip lights. I think I have a package in the store, but uh, just go to detail lighting. Uh, so we use these three lights. Uh, the Phoenix light doesn't work as well on white uh, because this one will change color temp from uh, 3000 to 6500. And then these, these will go all the way down to 2500 Kelvin, which is extremely yellow, which helps on the, on the white surface. So anyway, go to the polishing page from sesgarage.com. I know this gets confusing. I try to simplify it as much as possible. Uh, we were talking today, uh, the new site is close. So uh, navigation is going to be even better than it, than it is now. So it's become too robust for our current site. And so I need some more uh, higher level organization, which is Bryce has been working dil diligently on. Uh, so uh, the steps should be here soon. Uh, and uh, I do want to get the dents pulled. There's a dent here and one in the back. I'd love to get those dents pulled out. Uh, that was the dent I put in with Nick Murray. That was uh, years ago. So uh, anyway, we'll be doing glass coating, paint coating, trim coating, uh, new wiper blades, new trim pieces, uh, and I'll share that all with you. So the series continues, uh, but the truck is uh, coming along. Uh, so day four will be tomorrow. And, uh, you know, you could do all this stuff in a day. I'm just taking my sweet old time because I can. I mean, what else am I going to do? It's me here by myself. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Next episode, coding. Catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.